Hi, everybody. Glad to see you're back here. Um, so, well, I finished off with the first part of the assignment where we did a uh, adjustment layer and uh, edited on the layer mass to confine our adjustment to a certain part of the image. Uh, so now I've got some other plans with this image that I'd like to work with. Now, um, before we go any further, I want to mention once you do your adjustments and you've got your layers here, save it as a Photoshop file. Do not um, save it as uh, a JPEG um, because that's going to flatten that file. Um, we want to keep our layers here. This is how we work in Photoshop in a non-destructive way is to, um, is to use the layers. So, uh, I'm going to go up here and I'm going to go save as. And when I go in here to my save as, I'm going to make sure we've got a lot of different formats we can choose from. I'm going to make sure I'm going to select Photoshop. Now you notice there's one other item down here. It's called large document format. That is a Photoshop file also, but this is a specific format for files that are over one gig, I believe. Uh, it's a pretty big file, so you're probably not going to run into that any day soon. Um, so let's go to the Photoshop. We want to save it as a regular Photoshop file. We want to make sure that the layers is checked. We want to save our layers. And we also make sure your pro color profile is embedded. You don't have to use the ProPhoto RGB, but do make sure your profile is embedded. We're going to click Save, and I've already got it saved in there, but I'm just going to go ahead and replace it. It's going to ask us if we want maximum compatibility. Yes, we do. That means typically you'll want to do this because it means older versions of Photoshop could open it up. Um, that's helpful if you're sending the file to someone else uh, that might have an older version. If you don't need that, you can uncheck maximum capabilities. I click OK. And notice the little box down here, we can see it's saving. And now that it's done, I've got some other plans for this image, and I want to do something. I want to change that sky back there. I want to make it um, much more interesting. And let's see what I've got. I've got uh, hidden behind here. It's another image I've got, and I like that sky so much better. I'd really like to put it in this photograph over here. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here, and I need to, um, um, I want to select out that area, that, that sky area, and I'm going to cut that out, and I'm going to take this guy, and I'm going to slip it behind there. Um, so we can see it. Now, I've got this adjustment layer here and this, so I can't really put the sky underneath that background layer. Um, for one thing, it's a background layer. Photoshop won't let me put anything behind it. Um, and if I do that, then the curves layer is going to be um, is going to be on top of the um, of the sky image. And, uh, that's just really not the way I want to work. So what I want to do is I want to flatten that image. But I don't want to get rid of my layer, so I'm going to do a little trick here. I'm going to go over here to Layer, and I'm going to, uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to back up here. I'm going to make sure that this top one is selected. And then I'm going to go down to Layer, and I'm going to go down to Merge Visible, but I'm going to hold down the Option key when I do this. Holding down the Option key, I'm going to click on Merge Visible. Now, what it's done is it's flattened those layers. It's combined my adjustment layer and this background layer, and it's put it right up here. So I've still got everything. I've still got my original background layer. I've still got my Curves adjustment layer. It's just created a new layer over here. We got a different plan for this image now. Now, <clears throat> what I want to do is I want to take this sky. I'm going to take the sky, and I'm going to drag it over to my tree. If I drag it over and I hold down the shift key while I drag it, 
It's going to line them up perfectly. Um, of course, now my sky is on top. I'm going to move this over so you know exactly what image I'm working on. Um, so now the sky is on top here. Well, um, I need to get that tree to show through. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this up there. I can just change the order, drag it on top. So now the tree is on top. But I've got my white sky here. I've got to get rid of that somehow. Now, I can be destructive with this one layer here. I can cut out those a lot of pixels in there. Um, and I'm not going to fix this. Remember, I've got my adjustment layer here, and I've got my background layer. I can always recreate this again if I need to. Plus, I've got my saved copy on the hard drive already. All right. So if I simply want to take a brush tool, I can go in here with a brush tool. And, oh, I, hey, I don't have a layer mask for this file. So now I've got to create a layer mask. I'm going to go to Layer, Layer Mask, and I'm going to say Reveal All. And it's giving me a layer mask. It's white, so everything is coming through. I'm going to switch my foreground color to black. And now I'm going to paint on this. And I'm just doing this for a little demonstration right now. So if I paint on this layer, I get my sky to show up. But I've got all these tree branches. There's no way I'm going to paint around every little tree branch and every little leaf on that tree. So I'm going to um, go back, step back on in that. So I'm back to my original. Now what I want to do is I want to select all this white sky and I want to cut it out <clears throat> or mask it out. So what I'm going to do so I'm going to go to my magic wand selection tool and sample size is point sample I don't need really that I'll go increase the size of my sample a little bit my tolerance is at 30 I might want to go a little bit lower than that I think I'm going to start off at 20 and see how it goes contiguous is good that means that it's only going to affect white pixels that are touching this actually maybe not because I bet you there's some little pockets of white in that tree that are not touching the regular part of the sky and um, I don't want to sample all layers right now because I really just want to sample this actually make sure you don't have your mask selected you got to select your image that you're selecting from so I'm going to click in here and it's made a selection. It's really hard to tell exactly how good it is until I zoom into it. You may find you need to zoom into it. You'll be zooming into stuff a lot in Photoshop. Looks pretty good. I think I think it I think it did the job. But we've got a little area on the top corners here. So I could uh, go to another selection tool. I'll go to my lasso tool because the magic wand tool might pick up something else, particularly if I didn't have it on contiguous. So, and I want to add to my selection. So I've got to change this button here. And I'm going to just do a little lasso of that. I've added that. I'm going to do a lasso of this. I'm going to add to that. Okay. I think it looks pretty good. Now I'm going to go over to my mask and make sure that's highlighted. And I'm going to fill all the selection in. But you know what's going to happen is that mask has, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, that selection has very sharp edges to it. I might want to soften those edges just a little bit. So I'm going to go up here to select. I'm going to go down to modify. And I'm going to feather that selection just by a few pixels. I'm just going to do feather it by three pixels. Hmm. I don't know if that's working. You see it dropped out some of the branches. And hit Control Z. Go back to my other one. And I'm going to see if I can just feather it maybe by two pixels. It's hardly noticeable. Fact, I think I'm going to leave it the way it is and let's just see how it turns out for now. All right, 
So now I'm going to go up to, I've got that area, the sky selected. I'm going to go to edit, fill, and black, and there. Now, I'm going to hit Control Z. I'm going to just show you another way. I'm going to go back. Instead of going Edit Fill, I could also go in here with my paintbrush now, and I could paint in. It's only going to paint on my selection. It's not going to affect anything that's not selected. So. Like I said, there's more than one way to skin a cat. There's a lot of ways to do something in Photoshop. All right. I think it looks pretty good. Now, if you're tired of seeing those marching ants, as they call them, the little white and black dots that keep on shifting in your image, hit Control-D, and I can get rid of that selection. Yeah, it looks kind of weird. I've got a little bit of a uh, um, little bit of uh, uh, see the dark background. It looks a little bit odd compared against the uh, the tree, and the tree's got a little bit of a halo effect going on with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to need to um, to move that kind of expand that sky so I don't see the dark trees behind there. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to this layer my, the, with the sky and I'm going to go to edit free transform and I'm going to drag that one end of it down so I'm going to stretch my sky out some. There we go. And if I like what I've got I click OK and it's going to process it, and there. Um, it's not the greatest. I think in hindsight, I would go back in and I would modify that selection a little bit um, so that I didn't show quite as much of the tree. We'll just go in a few pixels, and it might get rid of some of that halo. Um, in fact, we could do that right now. I can go back into my history panel here. And there's my selection. I go in here, I'm going to select, modify. I'm going to expand my selection a little bit. I'm going to expand it by a couple of pixels, which means it's going to work its way into the tree a little bit, but I think it might work better. Go back, make sure my mask is selected, and I can fill this in with black. And let's see how this looks. Hit Control D to get rid of my selection. Go back, and I'm sorry. Free transform the sky. There. Still has a little problem down in here with some of that. We've got some areas that uh, didn't get totally masked out in that selection. Um, I think it would be a little too much to go into right now because I need to use some tools that we haven't gone over in class. So I'm going to leave it at this. Um, you can give a, give a go with this, see if you can combine two images and using your mask to select one part of the image and not the other. And um, good luck. Give me a call if you have any questions. If you feel overwhelmed with the second part of the assignment, don't worry about it. Uh, the main thing I wanted you to do was the first part. Thanks, and I'll see you on Monday evening.